Hey, my name is Idris, and today I'm going to be going over how I turned my Apple Watch into a fully functional poke edge. Uh, the source code for all this is available at the link in the description below. Highly recommend checking that out ASAP. Something tells me a project like this is going to be pretty uh, transient, if you know what I mean. So, for starters, we have the Digital Watch app here. Now, I tried to keep the dimensions as uh, realistic as possible. Obviously, you can't fit everything uh, at the same scale as it would be on a horizontal screen, but it works pretty well here. The only changes I made from the original Poketch is this uh, flashing colon, and that's because I want it to have a little bit more life to it. So as you can see, like the original Poketch, if you tap it, it glows, and that's reminiscent of the interglow feature on Timex watches. I thought that was pretty cool. All the colors are completely accurate, and I'll go into more of why that was a pain uh, later. Here we have the calculator app. This is pretty simple, but the difficult part was, well, first I had to make a whole calculator that worked the exact same way as the poke edge, and second, I had to fit all of those buttons and digits onto a tiny, tiny screen. I actually have the smaller Apple Watch, so I can at least guarantee it fits on the small ones, which means it should fit on the big ones. Anyway, so as you can see, you can just type in numbers and get calculations, and it goes pretty high up if I multiply by significant number. Eventually you get to an overflow where the numbers fill up more than the digits available and you get question marks like on the original Pokecatch. Pressing clear clears that out. Now say I want to divide by a big number. The original Pokecatch, once you hit zero, 00 all the way on, you'd actually lose all the numbers beyond the screen's available real estate. So that would really diminish accuracy, especially since the original Pokecatch had about 10 digits. In my case, I decided to store that, even if it's not being displayed, so you can just multiply by a big number again, and you'll see those numbers start to come back. And that's basically it. Here we have the pedometer app, and it does what it says. It counts your steps from uh, midnight onwards, and it's live, so every few seconds it'll update. If you want to count your steps from a sp specific point, you can press this clear function, and it resets to zero, and every step from there gets added onto zero. If you want to reset that, you just swipe out and swipe back in. Now that's actually an important feature of all the most or most of the Poketch apps, was that they didn't store any data between saves. If you were to swipe out and swipe back in on the original DS, it would uh, not keep any of the settings that you had saved on that particular app. So like the drawing apps, which I didn't feature on this app, but the drawing apps would uh, not save your pictures, the uh, apps that you would say reset the counts here would not stay reset. It was uh, they had to do what they had to do with the limited hardware, but still a little bit annoying. However, for accuracy's sake, I made sure to pass that annoyance down to you. Now here we have the dowsing machine. Uh, you probably heard the ping a little bit earlier. But the idea here was that, well, I can't actually do much with a real-life dowsing machine. Sadly, Apple hasn't enabled its Find My API, so I can't use it as, like, say, a way to find your keys or something. I can at least have it as decoration. Every ping makes a noise, and it is a realistic uh, look and feel to the original dowsing machine. And I tried to take advantage of the haptic library, so you even feel a uh, satisfying uh, little bump every time you press it. Here we have the counter, and uh, it does what it says on the tin. It counts. Amazing. If you swipe out, swipe back in, it resets. Here we have the analog watch, which is the exact same as the digital watch, even to the point where it glows but it's analog. Fantastic. Now here we have the marking map. This was really difficult to implement because, well, it's a really big map on a really small display, and especially with each of these symbols having to be really small so that they could cover, say, a single town or whatever, it was difficult to fit on a watch, but I was able to do it. And you can drag these little symbols up and put them on top of, like, different towns. I can't remember what those towns are, but it works. Now, uh, one great feature about this particular Poketch app was that in the original games, this was one of the only apps that would store your save data. So or what I mean to say is, say I swipe out and I come back, those markers will still be where they were left off. So that's pretty nice. Now, one problem with this particular feature was that uh, these tiny little markers can never be put back in the original app, so you'd always have them kind of messy. I decided to upgrade that a bit, and if you drag them all the way to the bottom, they go back to where they're meant to be. Here we have the Coin Toss app, which is a pretty quintessential Poketch app, honestly. I think when you think of the Poketch, you probably think of this, if you're, you know, thinking of the Poketch in your daily life. I doubt many people do that but me, who has had to work on this bloody project for a month. Anyway, I digress. So, it's simple. You tap it, it flips a coin. Stunning. Here is a much more complex app that took a long time to write. 
uh, and by a long time, I mean quite a few hours in a day when I'm supposed to be doing real work. What this does is it calculates how a uh, attack would work against a defending Pokemon with one or two types. So here we have a normal type, which is regularly effective against uh, normal type defenders. But say we chose a fire type. Now, if our, resist uh, sorry, if our uh, defending Pokemon was a fire type, it would obviously be not very effective. And if they're uh, grass, then it's super effective. This exclamation mark system up here shows just how effective it is. So for me, it's just super effective, but if you have a secondary type that makes it super duper effective, then you see you'll get five exclamation marks. And naturally, if you uh, had immunity, it would be zero exclamation marks. Now, as you can see, it's really hard to fit all of these small elements onto such a small screen. So I did my best. Uh, honestly, the only goal at this point was just to make sure it all fit, and it works pretty well, and it's mostly readable and usable. But again, we're really going for accuracy here over usability. Let's go to the next one. Now here we have the Color Changer app, and I loved this when I was a kid, so I figured I had to add it. The idea is that you can change the color of the Poketch to whatever you'd like. I was always pretty partial to this uh, indigo color myself, but considering what the next and last app is, I decided I should probably go for red for this. Now, this does not save uh, between uh, closing the app and opening it back up, and by closing it, I mean killing it and multitasking, not just leaving. So, for instance, if I leave, I can actually click this complication I've made right here, which is just a picture of the coin, and come back and it'll still say it's the same color. But uh, if I kill the app multitasking, the color will reset. Last but not least, we have the Voltorb stopwatch. Now this was never actually released. This uh, particular app was meant to be an event exclusive. So like you would use your Nintendo's wireless sorry, Nintendo DS's wireless feature and download the app, or at least uh, set the flag that would enable it on your uh, game. And the reason I guess they put this as an event exclusive is because it had the most animations of any of the apps I developed here. Yeah. Oh, sorry, recreated. I didn't develop any of these, of course. Now, if you tap it, you can see a, a volt orb appears, and it just counts up from zero. Tapping it again, pauses it, and as you can see, it blinks if you keep it held. But my favorite part is the Easter egg. If you tap it and hold it, eventually the volt orb will explode. And that clears out the whole thing. And while it's exploding, you can't actually uh, tap the button again. So that was a cool little animation, and Unfortunately, cool little animations take a long time to write, especially with Xcode's many, many bugs with Swift UI, causing me to have 50, 60 gigabyte memory leaks with just the uh, IDE itself, not even the app. Uh, that's uh, everything for all the apps, but one feature I did add for this was an always on display. So basically, if the Apple Watch, in this case, you can actually see it, thinks that it's not being looked at, it tints the display. With Watch OS, uh, sorry, with Watch OS 8, it actually allows third party developers like me to make it so that your app can still remain visible even when it's not being uh, looked at actively. So things like the clock here, it disables the flash and colon, but it still keeps the time. And all the uh, Poketch apps are, uh, well, basically they work with the always on display. So you can keep it on your wrist and use it as a, I don't know, a very nerdy fashion piece. Who knows? But yeah, that's basically it. If you uh, want to download the app and uh, sideload it onto your Apple Watch device, you can just head down to the link in the description below and check that out. It'll link to my GitHub repository and my website. And from there, you can download it and put it onto your own device via sideloading. Obviously, this is not in the App Store. If you want to see more projects like this, then just, uh, what's it called, like and subscribe and all the rest of that nonsense. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for listening and have a good day.